as you might see behind me, I've got some damaged drywall. Um, a while back, I had a leak in some water pipes inside this wall. On the other side of this wall is uh, a bathroom. And uh, one morning, I heard the sound of water running, and of course, everything was off, and uh, I chased that sound down to this wall, and I foolishly opened the wall up right there, thinking that's where the water leak was, and, <laughs> and I was wrong. I damaged more drywall than I needed to, and of course, I found the leak in there. <clears throat> this is an old home, and it had a 45-year-old copper inside the walls, inside every wall of the house. So I, uh, I opened up the wall and I hired a pro and I had him replace all the copper in the house with new modern pecs. But what that then caused is much more drywall damage than even I caused. What you, what you won't see on the camera is right down here. Uh, he had to cut more holes into this wall in order to put uh, pecs in behind the sink, for instance, and elsewhere in the house I have more drywall damage. And then I got to thinking of a project that I've always wanted to do, and that is install, um, what, do we, what do we call them here? Uh, audio exciters is, is, what, uh, is what they're called. They've been on the market for years and years and years, and I've own some I bought from Parts Express years and years ago and I've played with them. Uh, there's a lot of good videos uh, on YouTube showing uh, fun projects that you can do with them and essentially what these do is these turn any flat surface into a speaker. Um, and most of the videos that I have found on YouTube, very informative. Um, the trouble is, is I found no videos on YouTube showing how well these work in drywall or behind drywall or attached to drywall. Typically they're attached in, well, I'll put some links in uh, below this video to some of these other very informative, very great, fun projects that uh, surely I'm going to try as well. But those videos did leave those questions unanswered. How well do these sound in drywall? I am going to answer those questions. Uh, so I've got myself eight of this particular model from Parts Express, which is the Dayton Audio DAEX 32 QMB 4 ohm 40 watt audio exciter. And I got myself four uh, of this model which is very similar, different mounting system, how they mount, well, they both mount with 3M tape on the backside. This one just has the additional spider arms and, and sticky pads there. But this is the Dayton Audio DAEX 32 EP-4 4 ohm 40 watt audio exciter. My plan, I have eight of these and four of these, is <clears throat> what I've learned from watching the other YouTube videos is that one audio exciter is typically enough. Um, but the trick is, so it seems, is that you want a very stiff panel, yet very light. Um, so when this vibrates and excites the panel, the weight of this, which is to say quite light, is enough, or the motion of this weight is enough to move that panel and then therefore generate sound. The lighter and stiffer that panel is, much like a speaker cone, the more authentic and realistic and true to the original that sound will be. So drywall by definition is almost the wrong material in my mind. It is certainly stiff but it's not light and it's not free to move. It's very limited because, well, it's heavy, tremendously heavy in comparison to the materials used in some of these other videos. But it's also screwed down to the, the, the wood. So that's say it's not free to move. So I suspect 
I suspect this might be a failure. This might not work out well. Which is why I bought four of these and 12 of these. So the four of these, what I'm gonna do, because on the back side of this wall is my bathroom. So I'm gonna mount four of these to the inside of that wall, to the back side of that wall, so that these excite the drywall in the bathroom. So I have music in the bathroom. And the reason I'm going with four is because of what I was saying, with the drywall being heavy uh, and stiff and Im immovable or immovable, I figure I could use two on the left side and two on the right channel. Uh, more power, more force should move that drywall better than some of these other materials. But it is two enough. Is two audio exciters per channel enough to excite drywall to make good sounding sound? I don't know. But that's what we're going to find out. In my belief that that's not enough, that's why I then bought eight of these for the inside of this wall, for this side of the wall, the dining room side of that wall. Same wall, but on the dining room side, I'm going to put eight of these, four on each side, four for the left channel, four for the right channel, wire them in series parallel, um, probably looking for a common eight ohm load, might have to go with a common four ohm load per channel. It's just a matter of finding the right amp that can drive a four ohm load well, which shouldn't be too hard to find. So that's what I am going to do on this channel is I'm going to open this wall. In no way am I going to do YouTube tutorials about drywalling. I know very little about drywalling. And uh, I'm not convinced that that part will go very well. I'll do my best. Uh, and I won't focus on my drywalling skills by any means. But we are going to see how do these work inside drywall. Because if they work well, what a great replacement to in-wall speakers. Typically with in-wall speakers, you would cut yourself a hole similar to this, that size and shape, and you'd put a speaker in the wall. But you can always see the speaker. If this works, you're turning your entire wall into a speaker without seeing it whatsoever. So what we know about some of these other audio exciter projects that we, I've seen on YouTube, and you'll check them out in the links below, is uh, the projects that work well, which is to say most projects work well because these things work well, they turn most any surface into a speaker. But what we do know is that it generally lacks some bass. If this works at all, I fully expect it to lack bass completely. So that's why in this room, I'm going to include a subwoofer uh, just to fill out the sound. Uh, in the bathroom, I don't necessarily plan to put in a subwoofer because it's a small room, not really space to hide a subwoofer. Um, therefore, it might, because it might, <laughs> there's only going to be two audio exciters per channel and no subwoofer, it may, it may be a complete waste of time, waste of money perhaps, but that's why I'm doing this video, is to answer those questions. Is this a reasonable project for you to hide audio exciters inside the wall? Which brings me to my point, <clears throat> another point I've already addressed, I'm putting two of these per channel on the bathroom side of the wall and four of these on each channel on the inside of this wall for this room, like I explained, to give it extra force to move that drywall to make better sound. But one other good reason why I recommend multiple drivers is because this is inside a wall, if it blows, let's say you turn the volume up because, well, you need to because it's a stiff, stiff membrane and you need extra power to move that membrane, you're going to want to turn the volume up typically, I expect. And if you have, this is a 40 watt, it's the, the most powerful, both of these are 40 watt models, 
the most powerful models they have or can take the most power. But is 40 watts enough? Will I blow this? So by putting two per channel on the bathroom side, I'm increasing the power, uh, the power limit, the power uh, <laughs> the wattage limit per channel to 80 watts on the bathroom side. And by putting four of these per channel on the uh, dining room side, I'm increasing the power limit on per channel to 160 watts. The beauty there is if I blow, if I were to put one per channel and blow it, I got to open the drywall up in order to replace it, which is to say it'll never happen. If I were to put this inside the wall and it works and I blow it, I'm not fixing it. This is a one-time opportunity, which is why I'm putting up to four exciters per channel on the dining room side, the side that I do plan to use the most. Heck, I hope this works on the bathroom side with only two, two per channel, because I would love some sweet tunes while, uh, while in the bathroom showering, for instance. Give me something to sing along to. But that's my number one recommendation here. With one other, with one other recommendation. So A, put multiples per channel if you're putting it inside the wall just to give you that power increase, the power ability increase, also to increase the force so you can move the drywall in hopes that that'll sound good. Who knows, maybe I need to double it up again. Maybe I need eight per channel in order to move that drywall because it's, it, it, this project, this material does offer that extra challenge. Here's another highly recommended uh, idea for this project, and that is uh, capacitors for each driver. Got these from Parts Express as well. And what this is, is the, for simple terminology, this is a base blocker. By putting this in line with, with each exciter, um, or at least each exciter channel, you essentially, depending on the creativity of how you wire these in series parallel, you could essentially have just one of these, not per exciter, but per channel. So I would have a group of four on the left and one of these would block the base from going into these. We know that this is going to lack base performance. And by not blocking the base, you're driving base information, the most amount of power into these that these will never reproduce accurately. Again, I'm going to be using a subwoofer in here. So I do intend to block the base, which is going to further enhance its power ability in the sense that it's, I'm, I'm less likely to blow it by not sending base information. And that's what this does. Now these come in various sizes from Parts Express. Certainly read the description, get the right one for your project. It, it, it essentially, uh, it, what, what you select in Parts Express is where do you want to cross over the base? Where do you want the base to stop uh, entering here? Um, and I, I didn't put a lot of thought into it. I think this is a, a 300 hertz into 4 ohms. At, if you put this onto a 4 ohm load and it blocks the base at 300 hertz, I, I seem to recall. Um, and if it were an eight ohm, if it were an eight ohm load, um, what you get is you just get 150 hertz. Uh, so in either case, with, regardless of the science behind it, uh, either will do just fine. Blocking the base at 150 hertz is the point. Is you're taking the base out, you're reducing the power uh, going to it, and you're less likely to blow it, which is what I do not want to do inside this wall. So there you have it. Stick with me if uh, if you're interested in seeing this project. Uh, come together, follow this channel, and uh, click the like button and we the bell the bell icon, and we will send you notification as these this project gets underway.